My name is Ratsadine. Welcome back to Slay the Spire. <sighs> we have some patch notes to discuss with a heavy heart, mind you. I'm going to quickly scroll past that one so that we can talk about the second most recent one. And it has a new relic named Orange Pellets. The Flame Bruiser has been reworked into the Reptomancer. Uh, that is, of course, the third section enemy who summons those fire orbs and those fire orbs put burns in your deck and all of those kinds of things uh no draw power now counts as a debuff this is something that i thought should be a debuff for quite a while uh, no draw power is incurred by effects like the battle charts uh, you can draw no cards after this uh also the oh what's it called again it's it's the the energy cheat one bullet time for the silent both have you can draw no cards after this during this turn that now counts as debuff so that is really 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 good for the first time that you play one of those cards in a deck that might have like clockwork souvenir or anything like that that is giving you all of these artifacts uh the panic button card has been buffed the debuff in terms of the amount of turns that you cannot gain block for is down from three to two that feels a lot more in line I, I thought the panic button was a little bit useless before that and the upgrade now gives it 10 extra blocks so from 30 to 40. the reptomancer plus daggers which i have to imagine is what the fire orbs are now called the Spire Growth and the Transient are out of beta and into the main branch. And the Top Manager's Relic is now rare. I thought it was uncommon, but it's now rare, I guess. Or rather, I thought it was rare, but I it must have been uncommon before, and now it is rare. Cool. Okay. Uh, there's also content. Light boss chests are now optional in custom runs. Not going to be relevant to us for a while. Red Skull Relic is now common. Now, the Red Skull Relic is the, if you're below half HP, gain three strength. Uh, the Reptomancer no longer gives burns. And the Singing Bowl Relic is now uncommon, rather than common. If I could take a moment here to speak directly to the developers. Casey, Anthony, I do consider this an act of war. And there's some mod backend changes. <laughs> God, I, I'm going to get it less often now. I'm the saddest man of all time. I am going to go back to doing the silent and then the defect. A lot of people told me, Rhapsody, the reason you didn't see the new relics is because they're shop relics and they're boss relics. I know. But if I play the ironclad, I'm not going to see the hovering kite and I'm not going to see the... Because the hovering kite is the silent only boss relic. In the same way that the ironclad has the mark of pain boss relic, which is only for the ironclad. Um... And also, I won't see the Ring of the Serpent if I am playing anyone except for the Silent. And, you know, similarly for the Defect-specific relics as well as the Defect. Cool. Uh, obtain a random rare card around which I can probably plan my strategy. Yeah, probably. I mean, unless we have, like, a bunch of early elites. You do realize this means war. Uh, okay, maximum elite is three, no matter the path. Yeah, it's three, no matter the path. There's no great path, frankly. It's a really good path with late shop, I guess. Lose all gold and transform two cards. You know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'll transform a defend and a strike. We got a doppelganger and an alchemize. I'm actually trying to keep the doppelganger in this deck because usually I cut doppelganger as like the first card, like I and don't pick it up that kind of thing. Like I have severe disrespect for doppelganger, and I'm definitely not going to be playing in this combat. But I guess if I have a bunch of combo pieces, I can use it for a setup. Okay. I'm going to accept one damage here so that I don't have to rely on three strikes in the next draw. Because I wasn't going to get him, frankly. It's, uh, it's definitely an all-out attack here. Get some early AoE. It trivializes a lot of fights in the early game. Yep. Like that. It'll also actually probably be our first upgrade. Okay. 
Um, or maybe Alchemize, because I can't really afford the energy to play Alchemize every single fight. Power Potion, probably better than the Ancient Potion this early on in the game. Lachette Leg Sweep, hell yes. Pretty much every deck can use a Leg Sweep. I'm going to use a Power Potion here. Caltrops. And Alchemize, yeah, not super keen on the results we've gotten here. Okay, there's a leg sweep to get you a weakness for the next turn, at least. Not bad, not bad. I'll accept two damage here so that I can kill in the next turn. Oh, never mind. Looks like I had to kill either way. Another explosive potion. I mean, look, I'll take it. How defensive do I want my deck to be? Do I want a second leg sweep? No. I'm taking the second explosive potion primarily for the reason that if we get the Sentinels as any of our elites, we can just trivialize them with these two. Right, we got the boot. Whenever you deal four or less, unblock attack damage, increase it to five. I guess that's just increasing the damage of our neutralize at this point. Not a great turn for us. Strength potion is going to be super necessary if I come up against the gremlin knob. I have to use that. I'll double gang for an extra card and an extra draw, hoping to get as much defense as is humanly possible here. And that looks pretty good. Unfortunately, we did miss out on All Out Attack, which is a pretty high tier result. Yeah, that's our second explosive. It just has to happen. We would have taken way too much damage in this fight without it. That was a really rough fight to have this early on. If I didn't trade my cards in, I probably could have actually been killed there. Like, if I didn't have the potions from Alchemize. Yikes. Right. Yeah, here's the Gremlin Knob. That's why we kept the Strength Potion. Guess we've got room for Alchemize. Okay, that's not bad. Ghost and John's actually really good here. Yeah, 14 damage coming in. How about one damage instead? Saves me 12. And the enemy is going to die next turn. Almost assuredly. Some double defend there. Eh, or they could just not die that turn. That's fine. As long as they die in the next two turns after you use a standard block, you're still defending yourself for more damage than you're incurring by enraging the enemy. Strawberry, upon pickup, raise your max HP by 7. I kind of want to make a discard deck, but I'm not going to pick up the dagger throw as, like, the start of it. It's just got to be Alchemized first. Well, we're going to be opening the fight next turn, I guess. Doppelganger is just going to give us a really good opening here, especially considering most of our combat cards are still left in our deck. Mm, okay, I'll check that. Hell yes! Good lord, yes! And weaken for three turns. Get some. We do have to prioritize damage over anything else here. At least for a while. I will leg sweep. It's just too effective to not do. Right, 24. Yeah, we're not going to be killing him in the next turn. Really kind of terrifying. What's the likelihood I deal? Oh, okay. A hand with all out attack can probably deal 17 in that next turn, and it can get him. Quest zone upon pickup, upgrade two random attacks. Hopefully that hits the right ones. I'll take a flying knee here, just as a value pick. And what I really wanted upgraded naturally is going to be all out attack neutralize. 
All these smooth stones start each combat with one dex. We are now far more capable of being defensive than prior. Insta kill. Easy. Easy. Go make sure I get that alchemize off. Terror. Well, are we going aggressive? Because we could still go defensive with this deck. I'm I'm actually just picking everything that's good. I'm not picking to a strategy yet. I'm just trying to get some fundamentals in here. How much damage do I want to accept on the first turn? Eight. Get a bunch of energy this turn. Take up the attack potion. Masterful stab. Well, I know that I'll be able to play that at least. Masterful stab for 16 with another 6. Takes that to 22 with neutralizes a kill. But then the problem becomes that I'm going to have to waste terror on someone else. Mm, yeah, that could be better. What I was really hoping for, naturally, was the all-out attack. Okay. I mean, this is going to be three elites down on the first floor. Not bad. Got a choice of a upgrade or a shop after this. I think I actually might end up prioritizing the upgrade. Hey! As long as we get Neutralize or Survivor in the same hand as Masterful Stab, we can cast it. Which is just great. Damn it. If I prioritized my attack slightly differently, I would have been able to kill the sentry there. Whoops. Would save me 2 HP. Pantograph at the start of boss combat. Heal for 25 HP. Excellent. That means I'm probably not going to have to do any healing before that boss. Well, Lake Plans is good, but is it good in this deck? Not yet. You know what? Our deck... Archetype is still not defined. I'm going to go to the shop. I'm just desperately looking for a card to define my deck around. Or around which to define my deck. That's okay. We'll take the one damage here. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Nice. Explosive potion's pretty good. Second all out attack? I mean, dash is not bad. Dash is a lot better than I've ever given it credit for. It's also nice to have a single copy of a card that costs... Uh, sorry, an attack that costs two or more. Um, just in case you end up with the Necronomicon. In which case, dash becomes the best card in your deck. Next floor, we have even more AoE. I'm going to take a second all out attack. Do I want to take the Explosive Potion over the Essence of Steel? Yeah. Got to remind myself there is a shop in the next space as well. Oh, there's a Singing Bowl. It's too expensive to buy because now it's uncommon rather than common. I'm not mad about that. I'm just extremely mad about that. Don't worry, I'm mostly playing up the madness for a joke. I understand that it was too powerful to be in the common area. I mean, I've literally been arguing for 351 episodes now that it is way too strong. So to see it respected for being way too strong, I can't really feel that bad about. I'll take the Clockwise Souvenir. At the start of each combat, gain one artifact. There's nothing in there that I could really define my runaround. Now, I'm not going to go to a shop with five, so instead I'll go to a different place. Sure, I'll drop that. There we go. And I don't want another doppelganger. I don't even know if I like this doppelganger yet. I definitely don't have the energy to start worrying about my draw as my primary factor. I think I actually need to upgrade these all-out attacks as soon as possible because the next floor has all those AoE attacks, uh, AoE fights that are going to be desperately difficult for us. Oh, hell yeah. Steroid Potion. That's going to save itself because of the artifacts. Nice. 
So I get to keep the seven strength. Seven strength with the opening fight? Don't mind. If it do. I'll cast Double Gang for zero here because it's unlikely that I find a free turn to play it at this point. And damn. Yeah, we're definitely taking damage now. I mean, I could use the Ghost in the Jar. I get so many potions so easily. Mm -hmm. Should be able to drop you here with any reasonable draw. See what I mean? This is what happens when you have 7 strength and vulnerability already applied to your enemy. As long as the all-out attack doesn't discard the other one with... <laughs> well, we were fine regardless. Right, that was actually a perfect fight as well. Speed potion, gain 5 decks at the end of your turn, lose 5 decks. It's got to be reminded that Clockwork Souvenir will allow me to keep 5 decks for the whole fight. That is one of the big reasons that Clockwork Souvenir is particularly good in a deck that has Alchemize or a bunch of energy generation, energy generation, sorry, a bunch of potion generation in any way, shape, or form, right? Um, because if you have all of those potions, you'll have steroid potions and speed potions, and you can downside, uh, you can remove the downside and just gain five decks at the start of a fight. It's insane. I wanted to do a discard deck, and Tools of the Trade would start that, but the thing is, Adrenaline is insane. Adrenaline is too insane. Hey, we found it. Cool. Ring of the Serpent replaces Ring of the Snake. At the start of your turn, draw one additional card. So in the opening turn, this should be drawing me one fewer cards because at the start of the combat, draw two additional cards will be replaced by each turn, draw one additional card, basically. I do want the extra energy, but we came here for the Ring of the Serpent. So I'm going to dance with the person who brought me. Three elite maximum again. Oh, this. There's so many paths that like heavily incentivize not just going after elites. Quite a bit frustrating. I'm probably gonna take some damage here. I could just decide not to. Keep that six decks. <laughs> okay. Alchemize for probably like one of the worst results. Mm -hmm. Easy. Got my money back. Footwork's insane. This is now a defensive deck. It, I mean, footwork, oddly smooth stone, and the fact that I can keep so much of my stuff. So that basically means that all that attack, all that attack are now utility cards. Terra is now like totally antithetical to the idea of what we're trying to do in the deck. But that doesn't make it worse than any of these other cards up here, especially like the strikes and fence. Um, it's probably time to remove the strike. We have more aggressive cards that we've picked up since we started the game than we have defensive cards that we've picked up since we started the game. I'd love to play footwork there, but even more than I'd love to play footwork there, I would love to prevent any HP loss. So that Hex just got negated by the Clockwork Souvenir. I think the Clockwork Souvenir might be low-key OP, but I'm not going to say that because then it might get moved to the rare tier. It's currently shopped here, which does make it pretty rare, mind. Easy dex potion. I could take Caltrops. Caltrops defense, win condition. Let's do it. I haven't done a Caltrops deck in like a billion years. Backflip's a great pickup, but at the same rate, removing another card. Oh no, second Caltrops, naturally. If we're going to make Caltrops our win condition, let's make Caltrops our win condition, right? Let's use that block potion because I'm definitely alchemizing this turn. So the Mystic in the back line is going to try to apply Frailty to me. Gets negated. Oh, this is like... Should have played the more powerful all-out attack first, by the way. Just to guarantee that. Okay. Couldn't be more straightforward, frankly. 
That's got to be... Oh, was it heal? I thought that had to be a buff. No damage there to use. Yeah. It's difficult to consider the ordering when you've got two things that forcefully discard another card. So I can't guarantee that I'm always doing it right here, but I can guarantee that I'm not really getting punished and I'm doing it quickly, which is the kind of two things that I really need to guarantee. Acrobatics versus Poison Stab. If I had an Energy Relic, I would take the Acrobatics, but the fact that I have the extra draw instead of an Energy Relics kind of invalidates the Acrobatics choice here. Right. It's got to be the two Caltrops and then start defending. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, this fight could be bad. Probably going to pop the Skill Potion. Yeah, that's insane. That that's that's actually bonkers. We got exactly what we wanted from that. Gosh. Well, eight damage every single time you attack me. How do you feel about that one, bud? Flying knees, a little bit of energy generation that we don't really have in the deck. Take the doppelganger on this one. Yep, it's all about that defense, yo. <laughs> Thankfully, we had a backup to kill with. Dreamcatcher, whenever you rescue, you made a card to your deck and gain just a bunch of things I don't really want. Let's upgrade that second Caltrops so that we can actually form them as our win condition. Mm, Bajra, studies combo with plus one strength. That does make this deck a little more aggressive, but again, I think I've already decided my deck. Uh, we have three strikes, so to remove all strikes in order to obtain five bites is a wee bit rough. Because um, I'm introducing two more cards to the deck. That said, a defensive deck can oftentimes just stand there and occasionally buy it in order to get itself back to full HP. This is a marginal decision. I can see this one going either way. I'm not going to take it, but I can totally see it either way. I'm almost certainly going to be using the Ghost in the Jar here. Not a huge fan of the fact that I'm negating the weakness from Rake rather than the vulnerability from Scrape that could have come out from the Slaver in the backline. Entangle's fine because I am just playing defensively anyway. It's not that bad for me to be entangled. Getting both of my all-out attacks in this turn, though, that's a bit rough. They're two cards I was pretty happy to draw. But pretty sad to draw them when I drew them. Best defense I could put up. Still taking five, and we've got another vulnerability applied to us. Hell yeah. Oh, never mind. Bye. <laughs> Kunai, hell yes. Every time you play three attacks in single turn, gain one dex. Uh, that means that now one of the best cards that I can pick up. I could I could do that in a defensive deck as my only poison card. Um. Oh, Caltrops is gonna destroy you. Oh boy. Ow, ow, ow. Another one this time upgraded. We'll be in this fight for a while so I can use the regen potion happily. Probably also going to use the essence. All right. 
Uh, what I was trying to say is forgotten. Oh no, it makes Cloak and Dagger one of the best cards that I can possibly pick up. Now, I do want to be in this fight for a while longer, so I am going to stall for a second here. The enemy is going to die hitting me, but at the very least, we got most of the effect of our regen potion out. Liquid Bronze. Gain three thorns, naturally. Second Corpse Explosion's Overkill. Quick Slash Dagger Spray. Dagger Spray even has the benefit of Vajra, and I'm not going to be taking it. Upgrade that footwork. Easy. Oh, baby. Well, hang on. We can have better use of the thorns here or uh, here. Thorns is game. I, I will. Just for funsies. Okay. Beacon, Corpse Explosion, Double Defend, and I'm actually fully defended. Hell yeah. I haven't even played a single Caltrops yet. That's when... That's when this all gets spooky. Actually gonna take a wee bit of a hit here. But... 16 damage every time you attack me, and you're about to do it way too many times. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Bye. Wall paint upon pickup. Upgrade two random skills. That's really handy. Uh, probably not going to take any of those right now. Mm. Survivor's a good one to upgrade at the very least. I wanted leg sweep or adrenaline rush in particular. Those would have been the ones for which I opted. I'm going to go for the leg sweep. It's singularly such a powerful card when our uh, whole strategies don't take damage. I kind of want a Corpse Explosion here just so that I get the reduction of artifacting on the enemy. But at the same rate, I know that you're going to be summoning two creeps here. And I really want a Doppelganger so that I have most of my important cards out of my deck. And we already do. Hell yes. I pretty much just want to double all out. Of I want to do something else, actually. I want to go home and rethink my life. Ah, crumbs, I already am home. I punked myself. Myself an extra point of dex there, and then both of those will die to a single all out attack. Alternatively, I can do some fun with the corpse explosion here. Corpse explosion, kill you, you die, and deal your HP to everyone. We'll neutralize, then terror, then leg sweep. And we are still immaculate in terms of damage taken. Now, the big problem is we just went past our leg sweep. And this is the big hit turn. So... And if we use the snack oil, despite the fact that we won't get confused because we do have artifacting, uh, we'll only draw two attacks. So maximum defense we have this turn is 26. So that's unfortunate. Ah, well. You win some, you lose some. I mean, we're going to win this one, but at the same rate. At what cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah, should have used the all-out attack there. I, I saw the upgraded and unupgraded cards, and I compared them against one another just in terms of one of them being upgraded and the other one not. And that's not how that works. 24 damage coming in. Uh, lethal damage coming out. Bye bye. Burst Envenom on load. We don't hit our enemies super often, so the Envenom doesn't come in. It's, it's definitely burst. I'm just kind of entertaining the other options here. 
its best. Hey! Another one! Hovering Kite. Gain energy and discard one card at the start of each turn. We can now take cards like Reflex and Tactician with no downside. Because we will guarantee that we can down, uh, discard. So, I, I love the balance of this, by the way. Because Mark of Pain is an energy relic for the Ironclad that gives you two wounds in your deck. Which is sometimes a downside. Well, for most builds, it's a downside. But... The Ironclad also has a build that capitalizes on having status effects in your deck, right? In that build, especially, it's really good. This, discarding one card at the start of each turn, is usually a downside. But if you have discard cards in your uh, game, this is a really good effect, right? It's like having a Tools of the Trade in play. Well, like the good part for tools of the trade in play a lot of the time for a discard build is the fact that you get to discard a card each turn, so you never draw a dead draw. Okay. Maximum of three in all different paths. Ah, There's such a great path that has only two, but I want to go for all of them. Call me greedy. Call me Ishmael. Um, I'm going to go for that. Corpse Explosion is going to be really good in this fight, so... Pop that on the biggest boy. And pretty much just start wailing on him. No defensive cards in that hand, unfortunately. Ah! Accidentally dropped my phone. I was trying to move it away from my desk. <laughs> ah! um, Alright, let's get rid of the Caltropes. Yep. Boom. Thank you, Corpse Explosion. Deadly Poison Skewer and Slice. Nine Dunker. Two Madness. Yeah. It's worth it. Mm. I really want to go ballsy on this one, but our HP, though. I'm doing it. Finesse, Mind Blast, Good Instincts. Probably Finesse there. Sadistic Nature, Dramatic Entrance, Mind Blast. It's probably Sadistic Nature there. And Blind, definitely in the final. Could have skipped a couple of those, but again, I'm going to need a lot of status effects against the finals. And being able to weaken them is just... It's insane. Especially because I'm just going to be weakening them, defending myself, and having them hit my Caltrops. Speaking of weakening them and defending myself and having them hit my Caltrops. <clears throat> so what's just happened? That's what's up. Okay. I'm actually just going to use the Snack Oil right now. So I've got space. Got to play the strike first, that's my bad. Yeah, if I did that in the correct order, the corpse explosion would have been zero cost and I actually would have been able to play all of that that turn rather than most of it, but not all of it. Okay. I'm always tempted to drop the defend because I'm used to having particularly aggressive decks recently. I'm trying to work my way back out of that. Hey. Blade Dance is interesting because Blade Dance is going to be three shears out of your hand, right? They're each four damage by base, but they're five damage because we have Vajra. But more importantly than that, for one energy, I get an increase in my decks from Kunai, which is something I don't really get that often in this deck. I don't really play three attacks in a row that often in this deck, and I'd like to, frankly. Letter Opener, that's actually really good for this deck as well. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. We do that a lot, and even playing Blade Dance will count as a skill, because it is a skill. Naturally. Unfortunately, both of these are putting a burn in my draw and discard. Not great. Oh, 
Uh, we got a problem here. So I want Madness to hit the Leg Sweep, right? Which means I have to play Burst first. But if I play Burst first, it'll, ha it'll burst the Madness and then the Madness will hit both of them. And then I won't double play the Leg Sweep. Is it fine to not double play the Leg, leg Sweep? All right, 19. No, I still want to double play it. Damn. And since I don't have the energy to do it in any other way, I, I am going to have to... Flying Knee, and then Madness. And if that doesn't hit the Leg Sweep, then I'm actually screwed. Oh, no. Ugh. Fine. You got me, game. Took three there. Still got this Ghost in a Jar. I've got to always remind myself, I do have a Ghost in a Jar. And it is definitely being played this turn. No need to play the other defense because we're already fully defended. So instead, I'll just get some extra energy from the doppelganger. There's our extra draw afterwards. Double all our attack available. Nice. Hmm. Okay. Sure, use the adrenaline. Still don't have a defense. Uh, Corpse Explosion and then just kill the Backliner is more than enough. Boom. Runic Dodecahedron. I love this relic. Uh, there was a recent silent run. In fact, it was two episodes ago. Episode 394. 94? 49. Sorry. Uh, yeah, three, 349, where I was talking about how good the Runic Dodecahedron is. And a lot of people pointed out that, number one, I could have taken the the urn, the bird face urn, in order to play my powers, in order to get my HP back to full, in order to have my runic Zegahedron active more often. Yes, that's true. You're correct. I screwed that up. And there was also another comment saying that uh, they believe that I overrate the runic Zegahedron. There was a discussion on the Slay the Spire subreddit, I want to say about three months ago at this point, talking about how the runic Zegahedron desperately needs a nerf. It is not underpowered, and I do not overrate it. It is insane. It is so insane. It's easy to look at it and go, it's a win more card. But the thing is, it provides you a benefit that will prevent the negative from coming into play, given the right play. And there are certain decks that will never lose HP. And on top of that, I mean, if I had the Runic Decahedron, I would have taken the Bites prior, but I didn't, so I didn't. But on top of that, the Silent is the worst class for it because the Silent has the least access to self-healing. In the Ironclad, obviously, you've got all of the ridiculous forms of self-healing, including, by nature, the Burning Blood, the relic that you have by base, right? But even more than that, in the Defect, you have self-repair that you can stack as many times as you'd like. It's insane. I shouldn't need an Ancient Potion. No... Not that kind of deck anymore. Sorry, friends. Hey! Twisted Funnel. At the start of each combat, apply four poison to all enemies. Now, the reason that I would take this would not actually be to apply po four poison to all enemies, but it would be to apply uh, a artifact removal to all enemies at the start of each fight. Same reason, but still super worth. Uh, after that, I'll probably take the escape plan because I have a lot of skills in my deck and it actually has a way to deal damage courtesy of the letter opener. And then a card removal. Yep, just basic strike. Thank you very much. Hmm, this could be a problem. See, the problem here is that this enemy... I mean, I kind of want to play Terra. The problem here is that this enemy never takes damage to uh, Thorns because it gets intangibility before it attacks and it loses intangibility after it attacks. It's the worst combination. Uh, probably drop a Madness here because I don't need one, right? Because I can make the Leg Sweep cost nothing, but then what else am I going to do? See? Neither of those attacks did it take any damage to the 
ridiculous block that I was trying to provide. I guess that means that I should probably throw the Caltrops back, in fact. I'll use the block potion here. Eh, fairy in a bottle. I don't think fairy in a bottle is going to be relevant in this entire thing, but we'll see. Venom. I'm actually even going to draw. Use a hell of a lot of potions here. Self extra energy next turn. And actually, the enemy isn't even intangible this turn, so I'll go all out for damage. I mean, I don't even need to defend this turn, so throw any of the defenses happily. Beautiful. We could kill this turn with a good draw. Um, that's not a bad draw, but it's not a lethal. I don't think, at least. Hell, it was only just shot, and it will kill! Despite the intangibility. Art of War, if you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain an extra energy next turn. Hell yes, thank you very much. Uh, Crippling Cloud to apply seven weak and uh, seven poison to weak to all enemies is actually probably really good for me. And that's just because, again, the enemies have artifacting and applying weak in an AoE is really good. That Applying weak in an AoE, especially in that final fight, is really good to the point that I took blind. Right. No, I'm taking backflip. It's... We have enough. We, we have enough. In terms of status effect. Uh, Bottled Lightning upon pickup, choose a skill card you want to be in your opening hand. I would almost always choose the Adrenaline, but I'm a little wary. Maybe I take Blade Dance so they can get extra decks in the early turn. No. It's Adrenaline. Also, Adrenaline needs to be upgraded. Hey! Oh, God. I don't like how you move. Oh, that freaks me out. I don't, I don't like it. Take it back. Put it back in beta. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's so creepy. Oh, that hurts me to look at. That hurts me on a spirit to a level that I didn't think I had. We're not going to be killing the... Oh, God, the swing. Oh. I'm going to try and keep it together for your sake, but still... Oh, Lord. This... It's, it's okay. This thing will only haunt my dreams until the day I die, and that's fine. That's fine. That's the risk I take. I actually want to burst the Archimise here. I should be capable of doing that. Now. Nice. Yeah. Should be capable of doing that without taking damage. Well. This is a problem. Hopefully. Like then finesse. Oh, you'll take one poison damage. Oh, that's not going to be enough to stop you. Of course, you still get two damage through. My mistake again. And eh, got him. And still took two damage because I forgot that the weakness applies after the strength reduction. I can't imagine that I'll ever forget that again, or that I've ever forgotten it in the past and lost a match to it. Uh, Red Mask, hell yes, thank you very much. That, along with the Twisted Funnel, is going to guarantee that Donu and Decker have no artifacting at the start of the fight. Red Mask, of course, being applied one week to all enemies at the start of each fight. I will upgrade Adrenaline, my next upgrades. I don't even know where my next upgrades are going to go, frankly. I'm going to give that the best chance to hit Corpse Explosion, and it does. <sighs> Damn, should have drawn before I made these shivs. I would have burst the shivs, and that actually would have been really good. 
play lowest damage first. This fight's actually going to be pretty garbage for us, so we've got to make sure our turns are as potent as they possibly can be. Because we don't have big attacks to hit this enemy, and we don't have anything that's going to you know, equal 500 HP reasonably. Or in a reasonable time frame, if I want to say it correctly. Should have played the Terra first there. That was a that whole turn was just garbage ordering. I don't know what happened. My brain just turned off for a while. Okay. Burst that happily. I mean, it's not bad poison. We'll drop blind. We've got no weakness here. Biggest defense I can get. Yikes. At the very least, we've got pantograph, so we've got 30 more going into the boss fight. Between leg sweep and finesse, we're actually covered, so I'll drop the survivor. know about doppelganger gotta be honest potion belt pump pick up upgrade to potion uh, gain two potions loss rather i don't want to take a second hold that attack thank you nor even an in infinite blades let's drop the strike the whole plan here is just to get to the deadly poison put it, deadly poison sorry the corpse explosion put it on one of your targets so hey there it is and burst. Hell yes. Well, they're all dead next turn. Uh, yeah, they are. In fact, I'm just going to immediately end my turn. Bye. Fairy in a bottle. This was bouncing class. No. Okay, so the interesting thing that I just found out there is that since I applied Corpse Explosion twice, it didn't just do extra damage. It did also stack the effect of when this enemy dies, deal damage to all enemies equal to its max HP. Because we killed an enemy that had 45, uh, 54 sorry, HP, and since it had two Corpse Explosions on it, it dealt 108 to its friends. That's actually really important. I will be resting here, actually. Not taking any of those though. So we don't get back up to max HP, but that's fine. Let's take our neutralize. We'll be leg sweeping the front line anyway. Let's take our power. Wraith form? That's three turns of intangibility for me. It'll neg uh, be negated by the dex loss. This has been changed recently, so the dex loss is actually completely negated. We want to kill Donu first, so we'll make sure we set up for that. Okay. Didn't hit the right target, unfortunately. I was definitely gambling there to try and get the leg sweep to cost zero. Uh, it's, it's definitely burst of blade dance. Not only because of the frankly absurd amount of damage that it's going to do, but also because of all the decks that I get out of it. Hell yeah. We should get through with our final madness as soon as we possibly can here, so. Apply too weak? Well, you're not, uh, you're doing nothing this turn and you'll be attacking next turn, so the too weak will actually lower your output of damage. 
So playing a week on the back line there was good. Mm -hmm. As much as I hate to do it, I think I dropped the sadistic nature here. Ooh, draw could be good. If I got burst, it'd be insane. I'm going to do it. Damn. 11 and 17. So I can defend myself against that backliner. But I wouldn't be able to play Caltrops. Am I fine with that? I'm fine with that. Because it definitely has to be Corpse Explosion on the back line. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure, I'll drop a daze, actually. These, these cards are pretty important. Let's sweep the front line. I'm now fully defended. And as a result, I'm also going to gamble this brew these two days. And I'm, I'm literally just targeting Donu right now as hard as I possibly can. Because as soon as Donu dies, they're both dead. Corpse explosion, yo. Can I deal 44 this turn? Probably not. Do I need to blind this turn? Probably. Do I need to all attack this turn? Yeah, I kind of need all of them, frankly. Just short. Oh, no, wait. You'll die on your first hit against me. No, you won't because you got blocked off. Damn it. All right. We're not going to perfect that fight either. Damn. Got close as hell, though. Damn close. We prepare our daggers and deal a very pitiful amount of damage to the heart, unfortunately. Speedster. Really? Could have been faster. Uh, yeah, only one perfect two champions. Fair enough. If we defined our defensive deck earlier, we could have made that a lot better. We would have had a second leg sweep, for instance. I like that we got to use the new corpse explosion and we got to see the new two, uh, the two new boss relics for the silent as well as use one of the new shop relics for the silent in a particularly powerful way. I quite liked that. I still don't like doppelganger, but I quite liked that. For the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we will see you next time.